Lord, to whom shall we go? Many of Jesus' disciples walked away from him when they discovered that he was not willing to walk another miracle of the loaves. Instead, Jesus was talking about receiving his flesh and blood, which is holy communion. At this time, none of the crowd understood what Jesus actually meant by receiving his body and blood. They probably thought that Jesus would take a knife and cut his hand and begin to share it for them. Above all, they walked away because they were disappointed. They were expecting bread and fish to eat as they had eaten before and they did not get the bread and the fish and so they walked away. The people walked away from Jesus because he told them the plain truth about the Holy Eucharist. Jesus did not try to color the truth to suit the audience. Jesus was not so concerned about pulling a large crowd, rather he cared more about the salvation of their souls. By telling them that they were not getting physical bread the second time, they already felt offended. But now telling them that the bread they needed was his very flesh, it was as if Jesus was driving them away. Like those who walked away from Jesus, there are many times we walk away from God when our desires are not met. We stop taking our prayer seriously. We stop being active in our pious societies. We become less fervent with our devotional activities. Or we turn aside from following our conscience and begin to commit sin. And there are some people who do things like, I'm angry with you, God. I want to deal with you. You cannot deal with God. Instead, if you, if you choose to commit sin because you are angry with God, you are actually offending yourself. You are actually injuring yourself. It is precisely at such moments that we should be able to say with Peter, Lord, to whom shall we go? Obviously, the real reason for the behavior of the crowd was that they did not understand the Holy Eucharist. Even Peter did not understand what Jesus meant. And this is the definition of trust. That you don't understand something and yet you still hold on to it. Peter displayed great trust in God. You do not trust God because you know everything about God. You trust God because you believe He is all you have. It is not possible for us to understand everything about God. We cannot. There are some questions that we will not be able to answer, but that does not mean we should quit on God. God has not changed and will never change a bit. Just hold on. Don't quit on God. For His steadfastness to endure when he didn't understand, Peter would go on to become a great instrument in the hands of God. In uh, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, verse 31 to 42, we read that this same Peter would go on, uh, this same Peter knelt down to pray, after which he spoke to a dead woman, saying, Tabitha, get up! And she opened her eyes and sat up. You see, Jesus tells us that very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. And in fact, we do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask for anything, I will do it. You do not need to understand everything about God before you become his chosen instrument. But if you give up on God, perhaps you will not be available to be used by him. So continue to place your trust, your absolute trust in God. With him, all things are possible. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Father Evaristus Egemeyo Abu. And I pray that God Almighty will continue to keep you in peace and good health.